to BMT lab. So in this video, today's testing equipments will be given for the impact testing machine. So the capacity of impact testing machine is 300 joules. So in this impact testing machine, we are having basically two types of testings. One is IZOD, one more is CHARPI. So in this video, I will be giving related to IZOD test. So in IZOD test, we need to see that this is a pendulum. The pendulum which will be at a 90 degree with the vertical support. We have her here releasing lever. If we release this lever, it will be striking at the ground. So this 90 degree how we have to fix means if I release this, this will be a pendulum which will be striking to the striker. Here we have a brakes by which applying these brakes we can make the strike pendulum to stop at a place. Now in this way if we do this, now this pendulum whatever the pendulum is here, this pendulum before making a specimen to be tested, we need to have a check at the bottom end where the striker has to be changed. One striker will be of Charpy, another striker will be of the particular IZOD. So in this way when the IZOD test is made, this is the particular pendulum specimen. Here the dial gauge of IZOD is inside dial gauge. This inside dial gauge reads from 0 to 168 maximum joules. External dial gauge reads from 0 to 300 joules capacity. So I will be fixing this pointer at 168. Now in IZOD experiment, this pendulum with changes of the striker, we will release the first pendulum. When we release, we need to check what is the IZOD deviation what we have got. So we need to stop the pendulum such that it should not move further otherwise it will be very much strong hitting for us also. We will just make this pendulum to stop here. We will take a reading here what is the reading. This reading comes out to be 0 in the IZOD. 0 this is what the corrections factor which will take. So this correction factor will be noted down into the observation. After the correction factor we will take the pendulum once again fix it to the particular locking point. After locking we will take the specimen this is the specimen for the IZOD testing. We can see this as the V notch. This is V notch what we are able to see. So now for this V notch, we need to find out the specimens breadth and depth. So let me consider with the vernier scale. This is the breadth of the specimen. Here we can see easily this as the 10 mm is the breadth and when we take the depth of the specimen specimen depth is also as the 10 mm. So we got the breadth and depth of the specimen as 10 mm. Now whenever the striking is going to happen by the pendulum, it should strike from this way. So means the striking should be from this side. We should not place the specimen in the opposite direction. We should place the specimen towards the striking pointer only. Striking will be coming in this direction and it is hitting. Then the charpy test is placed. This is placed in the form of cantilever. We need to remember this thing that is we need to place this in the form of cantilever way, not in the simply supported or fixed from both the ends. We need to fix it in the form of cantilever part. So let me show you the fixing of the 
specimen onto the particular instrument. We are able to see the specimen is fixed such that V notch is provided towards the striker. Striker will be coming from this end and it is going to hit the particular specimen. Then this specimen will be broken into pieces in this particular way. So, this is the broken piece earlier one. So, now this test we are going to do for this specimen. The specimen here the specimen notch is provided. In this we will provide the specimen in this way such that here we can see the V notch and striker is going to come and hit on this direction. So, in this way we are going to fix this particular specimen into the notch and it will be firmly tightened by unloosing this screw. We will take it at the bottom and we are making it fixed at the particular part. Now, this specimen is fixed. Again after specimen is fixed, we need to take this particular dial gauge towards the 168 joules. Then we need to again release the particular striker, pendulum striker such that the specimen gets broken and whatever the reading is going to come that reading we have to take and write it. So, let us show you the specimen example considering the specimen fixed at the bottom. So, this specimen is fixed at the bottom now. Now, we have placed the dial gauge at 168 so that the reading will be easily coming for us. Then we will take the instrument. So, now it is fixed at exactly 90 degrees. We need to remember in IZOD it will be placed the pendulum is placed at 90 degrees from the vertical standing position. This is the handle where beyond this we should not go. So, we are going to release this now. So, here we are able to see the specimen is broken in this way. Now, we need to make a note of reading. So, here we have seen the IZOD 1 division is equal to 2 jewels. So, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Similarly, when it comes with the specimen reading, we are able to see 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 42, 43, 44, 46 and the reading comes out as 48 joules. So, specimen reading is taken for 48 joules. After noting down 48 joules, we need to do the calculations. So, let us go with the calculation part now. 